Welcome back to Business Morning. Well, I've been having a conversation with the Executive Secretary of the Nigerian Association of Small and Medium Scale Enterprises, Mr. Eke Ubiji, and we've been uh, talking about latest developments in the MSME subsector. Of course, uh, the recent one is the 220 billion naira loan that was actually an MOU agreement that was signed with the uh, CBN governor and 36 state governors and minister of the FCT to boost the MSME subsector. Well, Mr. Ubiji is still here with me in the studio. Thank you so much, Mr. Obiji, for sticking around. Thank you very much. Now, so we're focused on the aspect of government, and it seems as if um, all the plans that they started, have kick-started already with um, the signing of this, um, this agreement. Now let's focus on the subsector in question. Are they ready to access this fund? Because you see so many things, so many criteria, or criterion, as the case may be, has to be met to ensure that they can access this fund. So, are MSMEs ready for this fund? Um, with the way this fund was structured, uh, I can tell you a lot of them are ready. Ask me what do I mean by that? The CPN being the chief regulator of the financial services sector and also a development bank thought very deeply before it came out with this initiative. And even if you look at all the time funds are being disbursed, either through SMI scheme, intervention funds and all what not, none has been as friendly as this. You understand what I mean? None has been as friendly as this. Even they said uh, people in trade, trading, and other commercial activities. Initial, even the intervention funds you, the, 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 that was available before, even the smile skin that was available, if you are in trading or commercial, you are not considered. You are not given any consideration. Those who are into trading or commercial activity who get funds, usually get them from commercial banks. And commercial banks don't give it to them through funds they got for development, say from the, uh, CBN Direct, either SMI scheme or intervention fund or any name you call it. But this one now mentioned these sectors that are very, very vulnerable and volatile. People in trading activities, people in other commercial activities. And even gender, this, this, kind, this scheme also is also gender sensitive. This is the first time such a scheme is saying large percentage, over 50% of the funds should be given to women. And at single digit. At single digit interest, interest rate. rate. You understand? So the question now is, you're asking whether are they ready or not? Yes, because yeah. you see one of the factors usually is that uh, you don't have collateral or you don't have um, what it takes for you to access this fund. You have a very brilliant business idea, sure. but you don't have um, um, a concrete plan to show where this business is going to be uh, two years from now, five years from now. They don't want to give the fund to somebody that's at the end of the day because we've had so many stories of people getting these funds and going to purchase cars or do something else that isn't meant to be done with that particular fund. And so at the end of the day, they default. You see, th that's why the PFIs involved in disbursement are quite many. You have microfinance bank, microfinance institutions, NGOs, cooperatives. You know, in corporate, let me bring it down. In cooperatives, the way co co cooperatives operate is not the way commercial banks operate. Cooperatives use the idea of social, I mean, uh, uh, social guarantee. Social, what do I mean by that? One, all of us are in a cooperative and we assess this amount of money. Because we know each other, our names are in our list. As we, are, as we are taking the money, you are known within that cooperative that got the name on behalf of the other larger number of members. So you cannot afford to default. Because if you default, even your members, your own members within the cooperative will go after you. But Do you get what I'm saying? So now looking so, at it on that cooperative level, yes. will it be done in such a way that, you know, because you just mentioned, you know me, I know you. Yeah. So will it be that for me to access this fund, 
when after we've, after the cooperative has done the right thing, gotten the fund, the funds is waiting to be dispersed. Is it going to be on the basis of I know the president of the cooperative, and so that means I'm going to get this funds first, or is it going to be given based on who needs it immediately, or is it on no, who knows who? No, I, I, I understand what you're saying. You are looking at it from the perspective of Nigerian factor. Now, when you have a cooperative, you may have the chairman or president or secretary or anything you call it. But that does not mean that cooperative belongs to the president or not. Most of the things you are going to do will be done on collective decision-making process. The president cannot go behind and approve for somebody who is not capable, who does not have what it takes to borrow money and give it to that person. His name is on the line. He would not like to would not like such a thing. You know why I'm telling you this? Cooperatives have been in operation for some time. For example, look at um, the Bank of Industry. Even when Oputu was there, they were giving funds to cooperatives. They did it in some states I can tell you of. And in those places, you dare not try to default. If you default, the people that are after you are those that are in the same cooperative with you. For, look at okay, look at women. I don't know if you got, if you saw the report, either last week, in one of the papers that said, it has been found that women are more reliable when you give them funds to handle. Even the, most of the ministers, I spoke to the Minister of Agriculture at an event recently, and that's what he actually said. He said they would rather give funds to women to do business because they know that they will get greater returns and the business will bloom. So as far as they're concerned, women are the best uh, fund managers Ma that fund they managers. know. Fund managers, you understand? And now, this fund targets are 60%. The six percent of it goes to women. That means even cooperatives run or owned by women will have access to it. I mean, you, are, you have a group where you have women, like Market Women Association that set up a cooperative, and one of them will come and take the money through the back door. They will not allow that. We all come from rural communities. We know how, even in my own village, women, when it comes to issues of handling funds, women are more strict and more prudent. You understand what I'm saying? So I, I just gave you the lowest part of it, that even this, this fund put into consideration the issue of using cooperatives to disburse, not just microfinance banks or microfinance institutions or what. So as you're disbursing this fund, who is monitoring it? Because we know the Central Bank of Nigeria definitely is going to do a lot Absolutely. of monitoring and the PFIs as well. Even the state governors, they're also going to do the monitoring. But in the cooperative, starting on, on you know me, I know you basis. Sure. How are they going to ensure that they are monitored and evaluated? And if possible, given even if, if whatever it is that probably the individual has come to collect isn't, you know, commiserate to what you're doing, after evaluating and monitoring, can it be reviewed? And then the money, you know, an extra money or extra funds disbursed to this person again? Absolutely. It's, it's, it's stipulated in the guideline. But that's, well, especially that's, if you meet up with your payment of interest. If you meet up with that, that, that means as you are paying back, it's being monitored. If you comply with that, then you can even go back again and ask for more. But now, what I, not what, I, default. what I'm asking is mm -hmm. on the cooperative level, okay, will they still do the same thing? Because they report, so to speak, to the PFIs, who PFIs will report to the CBN. Sure. And the CBN definitely is going to have monitoring mechanisms in place. Absolutely. Will the cooperatives also have monitoring and evaluating processes? mechanisms in place absolutely why not because all of us are in the same cooperative now if you borrow money if you want to borrow money we must know the purpose for which you want to borrow the money for and it must be seen that that money you are borrowing for you are going to use it purposely for that purpose for which you borrowed it if you are not using it it will be shown your members will know because you you meet you regularly you meet talk to each other what you are doing with the funds you borrowed. And if any that's a question mark, oh, it will be obvious. It's not that if you give money to a cooperative, everybody will go and sleep. No, it doesn't work that way. So where does NASME come in? Um, NASME come in because we have members that are diverse. In all these areas we are talking about, all the targeted areas, our members are there. When you talk of micro enterprises, small enterprises, and so on and so forth. Our members are there. Even the cooperatives, I'm telling you about. There are some of our state chapters that have cooperative uh, organizations. For example, Oshu State 
they, their own is almost getting to about five years old. Lagos State chapter here has a cooperative. You understand what I'm saying? So with that now, they can position themselves to assess this fund. So can NASME also serve as an evaluating and monitoring body to ensure that there are members who have taken funds from the cooperatives do what they've collected those funds for? Absolutely, because we have, we have our own structure. Now, even though we have a structure at the national level, at the state level we have, but the cooperative work at the state level. So at the state level, the cooperative must have its own structure that will be overseen by the state chapter executive. You, you, you understand what I'm saying? It must be registered, must have a legal entity, have its own structure. And they report to the state executive. And then from the state executive, report to the national. Because if any of our cooperatives misbehave, it's going to tell on the name of the association. And the association will not like to have such a problem. Let me also tell you, what you are seeing today as MSME Development Fund, NASME played a vital role in setting it up. NASME served in the CBN committees that came up with this initiative. It started from discussion on financial inclusion. What do you do about financial inclusion? There are certain segments of the society that are not included in financial issues. That's how women came to the, for, uh, to, the, to the fore. And it was decided at that financial inclusion committee that something must be done to address women because large bulk of people who are doing petty, petty businesses are women. And there's no way the financial system caters for their interest. That's why this initiative came up. So NASME will not sleep because this is the, one of the occasions that the system is addressing the concerns of our members. You understand? And we're using this opportunity to tell people who maybe who are taking it for granted, thinking that this is not serious. It's a serious issue. And if they want to know, please, they should come and join NASME to know what we're talking about. In fact, that's also why when I was invited for this program, I said, please, this is very good. So that people, a lot of people don't know what is going on. People don't even, they doubt whether this is a reality or not. Like if you read uh, Friday Guardian, 25th of July, you could see where the governor signed the MOU that was on Thursday. A lot of people don't read it like any other story. If you read that story, it's not as detailed as what you have in the guidelines. Mm -hmm. 